Hello, welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer on this Wednesday of the 11th week in Ordinary Time. Now, today we hear the end of the life on earth of the prophet Elisha and uh, a very unique uh, passing in, uh, in, you know, in the history of the world. Uh, only three individuals, Jesus being one, of course, with his ascension into heaven, our Blessed Mother being assumed into heaven by God at the end of her earthly life, and the prophet Elisha at the end of his life. Uh, and the prophet Elisha was witness to this, um, a fiery chariots and fiery horses come down and, and swooped Elijah up and took him to the bosom of Abraham. Um, you know, that's quite a remarkable um, finish to an earthly journey. And like I said, very uh, unique in the history of humankind. Uh, and you know, I you don't question God how he why he would do things the way he does them, but uh, you know just uh, maybe as a uh, an incentive to people uh, in that time to to realize that there's more there's more in God's kingdom you know in store for all of us who follow God's commands and live his will to the best of our capabilities. But in any case, the, the, uh, the end of uh, Elisha's life, uh, no burial, no, uh, he was walking along with Elisha and knew this was coming. He had an, uh, knowledge apparently uh, when God was getting ready to, to bring him home and uh so it's uh and you know he, he even would speaking with alicia asked alicia you know uh you know all right maybe it was alicia that asked elijah for something and uh elijah said well what is it he said i would like twice as much of the holy spirit that, <laughs> that as you've got and elijah said well that's that's uh, something hard. That's a, it's a tough request. But he said to him, if you witness me being taken up into heaven, then, you know, it'll be granted you. If not, then, you know, oh well. But, but Elisha did witness the um, assumption into heaven on the fiery chariots and the fiery horses. Um, and then and in two instances here today in this story, when Elisha and Elijah are walking together, they part the Red Sea and cross. And then on his way back, after uh, Elijah had been taken up, Elisha parted, you know, well, God parted the waters, but at Elisha's bidding, uh, the, the sea opened and he was able to cross on dry land. Um, just remarkable what God can do. Our gospel today, still more from the Sermon on the Mount, and in today's gospel, it felt this morning like we should be wearing purple vestments today because the gospel we hear today is the gospel that we hear every year on Ash Wednesday. As Lent begins, we hear this exhortation from Jesus how to pray, how to fast, and how to give alms. And it should always be done quietly, reservedly, not... And I, I love Father Raphael's homily this morning because... Um, he, he kind of said, well, you know, we need 
people to see us praying. We need to inspire others to be charitable. Uh, we need to um, to be, you know, open about, you know, the things we do. He said, but here's the important factor. When we do any and all of these things, we do them not to be seen, not to be, uh, not for our own benefit and gratification or, you know, a holier than thou look at what I'm doing kind of attitude. But when we do it for the greater glory of God, when we have the the intent of serving God by what we do, by praising God by what we do, and then by trying to inspire others to do likewise. So it's a, it's a fine line that we have to walk. We have to be able to demonstrate our faith, demonstrate our prayer life, you know, our, our charity, but making sure that our heart is in the right place. We're doing it with the right attitude, with the right intention. And if somebody sees you praying and is inspired to pray also, hallelujah. If somebody sees that you're fasting and they ask you about it and you can explain why and it inspires them to do the same thing, wonderful. If they see you being charitable and they're inspired to also be charitable, those are good things. But we always have to make sure that we're doing it for other people. We're doing it for our Lord and not for our own self aggrandizement. Okay, we don't we don't puff ourselves up. That was the point that Jesus was making when he delivered this message. Um, you know, we, we have to maintain humility through all of this. But it is, as what Father Raphael said this morning, it's, it's a good thing when, when people see us being devout, being charitable. So, you know, we have to balance, balance what we do. Okay? Wonderful. Let us pray our evening prayer, shall we? On this beautiful Wednesday evening. And we begin and we enter into our prayer as we always do. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Just as you... Sh no, no, wrong line. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. When then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our lips there were songs. The heathens themselves said, What marvels the Lord worked for them! What marvels the Lord worked for us indeed! We were glad. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage, as streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. They go out, they go out full of tears, carrying seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, you have raised us from the earth. May you let the seeds of justice which we have sown in tears grow and increase in your sight. May we reap in joy the harvest we hope for patiently. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. 
May the Lord build our house and guard our city. If the Lord does not build the house, in vain do its builders labor. If the Lord does not watch over the city, in vain does the watchman keep vigil. In vain is our earlier rising, your going later to rest. You who toil for the bread you eat, when he pours gifts on his beloved while they slumber. Truly, sons are a gift from the Lord, a blessing, the fruit of the womb. Indeed, the sons of youth are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. O oh, the happiness of the man who has filled his quiver with these arrows. He will have no cause for shame when he disputes with his foes in the gateways. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You command the seed to rise, Lord God, though the farmer is unaware. Grant that those who labor for you may trust not in their own work, but in your help, remembering that the land is brought to flower, not with human tears, but with those of your Son. May the church rely only upon your gifts. May the Lord build our house and guard our city. He is the firstborn of all creation. In every way the primacy is his. Let us give thanks to the Father for having made you worthy to share the lot of the saints in light. He rescued us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his beloved Son. Through him we have redemption the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creatures. In him everything in heaven and on earth was created, things visible and invisible. All were created through him, all were created for him. He is before all else that is. In him everything continues in being. It is he who is head of the body, the church, he who is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that primacy may be his in everything. It pleased God to make absolute fullness reside in him, and by means of him to reconcile everything in his person, both on earth and in the heavens, making peace through the blood of his cross. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. He is the firstborn of all creation in every way. The primacy is his. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. To God, whose power now at work in us can do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, world without end. Amen. Claim me once more as your own, Lord, and have mercy on me. Claim me once more as your own, Lord, and have mercy on me. Do not abandon me with the wicked. Have mercy on me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Claim me once more as your own, Lord, and have mercy on me. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich. He has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Let us humbly pray to God, who sent his Son as the Savior and exemplar of his people. May your people praise you, Lord. Give us thanks. Let us give thanks to God who chose us as the first fruits of salvation and who called us to share in the glory of your Lord Jesus of our Lord Jesus Christ may your people praise you lord may those who confess your body may those who confess your holy name be united in your truth and fervent in your love. May your people praise you, Lord. Creator of all things, your Son desired to work among us with his own hands. Be mindful of all who earn their living by the sweat of their brow. May your people praise you, Lord. Be mindful of those who devote themselves to the service of their brothers. Do not let them be deterred from their goals by discouraging results or lack of support. May your people praise you, Lord. Be merciful to the faithful departed. Keep them from the power of the evil one. May your people praise you, Lord. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us offer our prayer to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Merciful Lord, let the evening prayer of your church come before you. May we do your work faithfully, free us from sin, and make us secure in your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great night, everyone. Rest well. And uh, I think we, we need to... Uh, continue. So, good Lord willing, I will see you all tomorrow. Rest well.